So, I was in class at the beginning of my junior year, and we were getting ready to start learning a new language. And as my teacher explained some of the ins and outs and the basic structure of the language, I had this flashback moment to two years earlier when I was in French 1. Except that this time I wasn't learning French. I was sitting in game programming and web applications at the Miami Valley Career Tech Center, and we were getting ready to start learning C++. I realized that everything that we were learning, it was the same as when I had taken French. So I decided to look more into it. And it turns out that programming languages function nearly the same as the languages that we would normally think of. I can draw parallels between almost every part of speech and a part of programming. In English, you would have nouns, persons, things. In programming, you have literals. 10, it means 10. Uh, pronouns, words that replace nouns. In programming, you have variables. In verbs, there's any action operators that you can use. Above the parts of speech, you also have punctuation, which is just as important in programming as it is in English. In English, if you drop a comma, you can go from a nice family dinner to cannibalism, <laughs> which isn't fun. In programming, if you drop a bracket or a comma or a semicolon, your program could completely fail or worse, it could do something that you don't expect it to do. So I saw this and realized that the structure is nearly perfect. And I looked more into it and I found a study done by some researchers in Texas that took a selection of students studying Java and ran an fMRI scan while they interpreted a small snippet of Java code and found that there were five main activities, main areas of activity. Broadman areas 6, 21, 40, 44, and 47. Of these five, three of them, areas 21, 44, and 47, are all known language processing centers. So not only is the structure the same, but the brain interprets programming in a very similar way. But with all of this, in most schools in America and across the world, you can't take programming and get a language credit for it. Before I moved to the Miami Valley CTC, at Wayne, I had six periods a day. Of those six periods, four of them were core classes, math, science, English, and social studies. We also had to take a full year of gym, a half year of health, and a half year of a fine art. And three years of a foreign language, or two years of two different foreign languages. This leaves two or three open periods two of them in your senior year. That's not enough time to get enough experience in programming to really delve into it and discover all of its capabilities. But if you were able to take a programming class as a foreign language, suddenly now you have six spots to take a programming class. This opens up the opportunity for people who might not have sought out programming classes to take the class when they look at their scheduling paper, I don't really want to take French or Spanish, but programming with Java looks cool. So they take it, discover that they have an aptitude for it, that they like doing it, pursue that through high school and college, and then they come out of college, and that person makes some important contribution to the world of technology. They never would have made that contribution had they not been given the opportunity to take the class in the first place. The purpose of education is to prepare students to be successful contributing members of society. And as technology becomes more omnipresent, students need to be able to utilize that technology to the best of its ability. And if education isn't doing that, it's not doing its job. Now I said almost every school, because in Florida, New Mexico, and Kentucky, there have been attempts to pass legislation to support programming as a foreign language. Those three states failed, but Texas and Oklahoma didn't. In Oklahoma, students are required to take two years of a foreign language or two units of a computer programming or other computer-related field. And in Texas, it, at the end of the summer of 2017, they passed legislation to account for programming and other cybersecurity-related fields in the foreign language credit. These states are going to see a major increase in the number of students coming out of their educational systems into the world of tech because they have the pathways for it. 
Now, this idea goes even farther back than just the last few years. It goes back as much as 40 years ago when my grandfather, the man who really got me into programming, was in his junior year of high school. He was given the opportunity really late in his junior year to take his classes at Penn State University for his senior year of high school. So they rushed through his application and they discovered that he hadn't taken a foreign language, which was a requirement for acceptance to Penn State. He was able to work with a professor at Penn State and prove to the admissions department that because of the wealth of programming languages that he knew, that was enough proof to waive the requirement under the special conditions. So if 40 years ago, Penn State saw the opportunity for programming to count, or at least be enough proof that he didn't need the classes, in 2018, I think it's time that we look at the educational system and start opening up the doors for people to be successful in the world of tomorrow. Thank you.